Okay, uh, graphing rational functions. Uh, I just want to make a, a very subtle point before I just jump in and get started with this topic. Uh, this particular section, this particular concept, is pretty much the closest to what analysis and calculus is going to feel like. Um, there are a lot of definitions, there are a lot of bits and pieces and properties, and that by themselves are not hard to do. But calculus is, is more about taking all of these facts and properties and things we've learned throughout the years in math and putting together a complete picture as far as what a function may or may not be doing. And I think when we look at graphing rationals, uh, to me, this feels the closest to what an actual calculus, a typical calculus lesson is, is going to feel like for a lot of students. Um, so as you're sitting there thinking, oh, this is hard and frustrating, think about why you're getting frustrated. Um, yeah, there's, there's, it's hard to, you know, it, it's not fun to get it wrong, and it's not fun to make mistakes, but the type of skills that, uh, that we're going to review here are going to be very relevant and very helpful when you get to actual calculus content. All right, so let me start by uh, putting an actual example up. Uh, x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x plus 3. Okay, uh, y-intercept is pretty much like every other case we've seen it. Uh, we're going to find f is 0, so I'm going to evaluate this at 0, and whatever number I get out, that is where this thing crosses the uh, y-axis. So that would be uh, 6 over 3, which reduces down to 2. So this particular rational function crosses at 0, comma, 2. Okay. Uh, the x-intercept, okay, uh, just let me talk theory for a second. Uh, we have a fraction. I want to set the fraction equal to 0. Okay, uh, so I'm not really, I don't really care about the whole fraction. I really care about the numerator. Because the only way for a fraction to reduce down to 0 is if the numerator happens to be 0. Okay, obviously if the denominator is 0, we've got some undefined things, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, right now we're focused more on that numerator. So I want to know when is x squared minus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. And that is a nice factorable one. That's uh, x minus 3 and x minus 2. And so it crosses the x-axis at 3 comma 0 and at 2 comma 0. Okay, So I've got three ordered pairs that I know lots of stuff about. Okay, Vertical asymptotes. All right, well, let's stick with the same equation. Uh, the VAs, as you'll hear it called in the shortcut sense, uh, we find by setting the denominator equal to 0. So in our uh, sample case, uh, we're going to set that x plus 3 equal to 0 and solve, which means x equals negative 3 would be a uh, vertical asymptote. So if I go over to on the x-axis, if I go to negative 3, what we've got is we've got this, this asymptote that helps define part of our graph. Okay. Uh, all right, horizontal asymptotes. Uh, okay, there are two types of horizontals uh, that we focus in on, and then it's really dep dependent upon the type of equation we're dealing with. Uh, so we could have something that's from a what's called a bottom-heavy rational function. Uh, bottom-heavy rational. Uh, so something like f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 4x plus whatever. Um, okay, in that sense, the denominator's got a larger power than the numerator, so we call this a bottom-heavy rational. And so we say that the HA, the horizontal asymptote for all bottom heavies, are the line y equals 0. Okay, meaning the x-axis uh, has an asymptote on it. Okay, the other type uh, we call same exponent. Okay, and this is, let me give you an example, uh, 2x squared plus 3x over uh, 5 x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, uh, This is called same because the numerator and denominator both have the same uh, degree. They both have the same exponent. And I'm going to look at 
the leading coefficients of those two numbers. And so the HA, when it's the same case, is the ratio of those two numbers. So in this case, y equals 2 fifths. So in a graph, you got to figure 2 fifths is close to 0, but not quite. So there'd be an asymptote uh, a little bit above 0 where 2 fifths is. Okay. All right. Uh, next up would be a slant asymptote. And a slant asymptote occurs when we're dealing with a top-heavy rational function. And the idea on that is we're either going to use uh, synthetic division or polynomial long division uh, to divide out and see how often it, or the common factor in that. Uh, so let me give us uh, that initial one we start off with x squared minus 5x plus 6 over uh, x plus 3. Okay, it's top heavy. So um, now I could do synthetic division, and we reviewed that in an earlier section. So I think it would be a good idea if I took a second and reviewed polynomial long. Okay. So I'm going to ask myself, uh, well, how, what do I multiply x plus 3 by to get it to say x squared something? And that would be x. So x times x is x squared. x times 3x is plus 3x. And then just like in grade school, I'm going to subtract those two. And if I subtract, I'm left with uh, negative 8x, and then I'm going to drop the 6. OK. Well, how do I get? x plus 3 to say negative 8x plus something, well, I'm going to multiply by negative 8. And so if I do that, I get negative 8x uh, plus 24. Okay. Um, and that's going to give me a remainder. Uh, let's see. So if I subtract that, uh, that would be a remainder of uh, 18. Okay. Uh, negative 18, sorry. So this would be minus 18 over the x plus 3. Okay, so the actual uh, slant asymptote out of this is that evenly divisible piece. It's that x minus 8. So the slant asymptote for this particular rational would be y equals x minus 8. Uh, and so in the graph, and imagine I go down to 8 there, I would have a dotted line that goes through uh, the, the look that follows the x minus eight looks like a linear equation that goes through x minus eight. Okay, uh, that brings us to holes. Okay, a hole is uh, if I have something in factored form, if in factored form, and a common factor divides out. All right, divides out. Do to do, do. Let me try writing that a little bit nicer. Divides out. Okay, the thing that divided out is where we find the hole. Okay, so this common factor is our hole. Okay, so let me give you an illustration of this. Uh, let's say I've got uh, factor form x plus two times x minus two divided by x plus two. Okay, well, the x plus 2's divide out, uh, and I'm left with x minus 2, but I have a hole at x plus 2, which means when x equals uh, negative 2, there's a hole there. Okay, now holes are points that aren't in the graph. So there's an x value and a y value. Well, where do I get the y value? Well, I have that nice reduced equation, that x minus 2. I have that x value of negative 2. So I'm going to take uh, this negative 2, and I'm going to evaluate it there. So that's negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4. So this particular rational that I've made up here has got a hole at negative 2 comma negative 4. Okay. All right. Uh, the very last uh, sort of skill I want to run, th uh, run through with you uh, is sign testing. Okay, now um, 
let me get, just take a second. So we, we do sign testing if we need to know uh, if the y values are positive or negative. And th this happens a lot in calculus. It's happened with uh, when we looked at domains of square roots. Uh, sign testing is a great skill. Okay. But we, we only really use it if I'm just trying to figure out positive or negative y values. Uh, and sometimes that's all I really need to know. Okay, So the way sign testing would work, uh, looking at this particular rational function, uh, well, where would, where would this thing change signs at? Well, there's a couple of interesting places that we could look at. We could look at the x-intercepts, because I know the x-intercept, the y value is 0. And I could look at the vertical asymptote, because at the vertical asymptote, the y value is undefined. Okay. Everywhere else, in this example, uh, it's going to be consistent with where it's at. Um, but those two places are the only two places that this particular rational function can switch y values on us. It can go from being positive to negative. Okay. So I'm going to uh, pick a number uh, within each region. So I might pick negative 4 because it's on the left side of negative 3. I might pick 0 because 0 is always nice to use. Uh, and then I might pick 3. And again, all I really care about is whether I get a positive or negative number. So then I would take uh, each of these test numbers and I would plug it back into the initial function. So I'd go negative 4 plus 3 over negative 4 minus 2. 0 plus 3 over 0 minus 2, 3 plus 3 over 3 minus 2. And all I really care about is whether I get a positive or negative number at the end. So if I do the top one, the negative 4 plus 3, that gives me negative on top, negative on the bottom. I get a positive number. Okay. Uh, if I put a zero in, uh, I get a positive numerator, negative denominator, so I get a negative uh, result. And obviously the last one's positive. Okay. So uh, again, sign tests are used any time I only care about whether it's a positive or negative y value. Okay. Okay, so um, we're going to just start with a, a nice uh, example that's going to illustrate a lot of the, the different principles that I'm trying to, to go for here. And again, this is a nice uh, practice on analysis skills that come up a lot in calculus. Uh, so as we're going through this, if you find there's things you're like, oh, I have no idea what's going on, uh, jot that one down and shoot me an email. Uh, in the, I should, you should have an email address for me. Uh, and you can ask for more in-depth detail, and I can try to clarify the example from there. Okay, so one thing I'm going to start with is uh, factored form, because if there's a hole here, I would like to only deal with the reduced equation. So uh, I'm going to factor this, and that should help me identify other things down the road. So uh, let's see, factor out an x, I get x plus 4. Nothing divides out, so I already know there's no holes. Uh, then I'm going to go find my intercepts. So the y-intercept would be f of 0, which is 0 plus 1 over 0 squared plus 4 times 0. And already I find out that I don't have one. This is actually, I get 1 over 0, which is undefined. That tells me there are no y-intercepts in this picture. Okay. Uh, then the x-intercept, x-intercept I get by looking at the numerator. So I set the numerator equal to 0, uh, which gives me x equals negative 1. So I know the only place that this thing crosses the x-axis is at negative 1. Uh, then we're going to go to vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes, I look at the denominator. And in this case, I get a VA at 0, and I get a VA at negative 4. So when I set that denominator equal to 0 and solve. And my horizontal asymptote, uh, it is bottom heavy. It's got a squared in the denominator and an x in the numerator. So the denominator is larger than the numerator. So that means it's got an ha at y equals 0. 
Okay. Well, let me, uh, let me, I'm, I'm not saying we're done yet, but let me fill in what we know so far. Is maybe we've got enough information that we could actually sketch a reasonable graph as far as what this goes. And if we're not done, then that just means the sign test has to come in to play. Uh, all right, so I know uh, I've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. And I know vertical asymptote at uh, 0. That means the y-axis. And that explains why we don't have uh, y-intercept, because there's an asymptote there. There's nothing. There's no y-value at the uh, y-axis. Uh, and then we have another one at negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Okay. Uh, I know, let me switch colors to purple here, I know it has an x-intercept at negative 1. Okay. Uh, other than that, I am not sure. Um, I've kind of run out of facts to, gra to label. Okay, so this would be a great time for that sign test to kick in. Because uh, I'm not sure whether the y values are positive or negative. Uh, but I, I only have a few places where it could possibly switch signs. So note the vertical asymptote it could switch. So negative 4 would be something interesting to note. Uh, the, so I'm just literally I'm going along the x-axis and I'm writing down anything that's interesting. So negative 4 shows up. Uh, negative 1 shows up. Uh, 0 shows up. And that's it. Uh, so when I sign test this, uh, I just need to figure out those places. So there's four places I need to figure out. Uh, so something smaller than negative 4, negative 5, something between negative 4 and negative 1, negative 2, negative a half, between negative 1 and 0, and uh, 1. Okay, And I'm going to uh, rewrite this uh, function here so you can kind of see on the screen what I'm sign testing. Okay. And again, all I really care about, um, oh, actually, you know what? Factored form. Let me go back to factored form. This factored form is great for figuring out sign tests on x, x plus 4. Okay. Uh, again, all I really care about is whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so if I go put a negative five in, negative five, I get a negative numerator and a positive denominator. So put those those two together, I should get a negative y value. Okay, uh, negative two. If I put a negative two in, I get a negative numerator, uh, and then. I get a negative, this is a negative times a positive, so I get a negative denominator. This time I get a positive number. Okay, half, negative a half might be a little tricky, so let's see if we can think through this. Uh, negative a half plus one, so I get a positive numerator, negative one half, okay, times three and a half, so times a positive. So I get a positive up top, positive negative, so that means the overall result should be negative. And then 1, well, I've got a bunch of positive things in there, so there's, there's got to be a positive number. Okay. Uh, let me just kind of point out, a lot of students go, oh, it's positive, negative, positive, so, and they think that's a shortcut. It's not always going to be this way. Uh, it does happen a lot, but it also happens just as often where the signs aren't always alternating. It could just be positive, positive, negative, negative. Right? You still need to sign test each value and compare for what, what's going on. Okay. So um, let me go back to the graph and talk about what this says. Okay. What this says is that from negative 4 out to negative infinity, I know I have negative y values. So my graph has got to be below that asymptote, and I know it doesn't cross the y-axis because I already wrote down that one place that that happened. So I know that part of the graph has to look like that. Okay. From negative 4 to negative 1, I know they have to have positive y values. So it's going to leave this x-intercept, and it's going to hug that asymptote. With rationals in any asymptote, nice little phrase, you know, just good old-fashioned country. What do you want to do with them asymptotes? You want to hug them. So try to hug your asymptotes whenever you get a chance. Okay. 
Uh, negative 1 to 0. Negative 1 to 0, we know we have negative y values. So after it left negative 1, it must have come down and hugged that way. And then uh, past 0 uh, in that first quadrant, it's got to have positive y values. So it must have hugged this direction. Uh, and there's our graph. Okay.